Assalamualaikum, hello and welcome to the 13th episode of the program Organization and Management. In today's program, we are going to discuss conflict and negotiation. But first, we will have a review of what we studied in the last episode. I'm your host Komal and with me I have the expert Mr. Say Chaudhary, sir. Thank you. In the last program, we studied what is power and reward power coercive power, legitimate power, process power, information power, referent power, power and leadership, and using power. Now students, in today's topic, we are going to discuss conflict and negotiation. Let us first have a view what is going to be discussed. Conflict, conflict and organizational performance, Types of conflict, sources of conflict, resolving conflict, managing individual conflict, conflict resolutions, and negotiation strategies. Sir, would you be kind enough to elaborate further? Sure. Now, when people work together, there are bound to be conflicts. But a manager is duty bound to take everybody along to take them all on board and make a success of the organization for which he or she is responsible. Mm -hmm. So the conflicts are natural wherever humans work together, yes. but they must be resolved also so that the organization could succeed and work peacefully. What is the origin of conflict? Now students, coming to the origin of conflicts, conflict has been defined as the process which begins when one party perceives that the other has frustrated or is about to frustrate some concern of his. Conflict can play a creative role in the planning process. Debate over the proper technical approach to a problem often generates a collaborative solution that is superior to any solution originally proposed. Conflict often educates individuals and groups about the goals, objectives of other individuals and groups. Now, we have seen in this slide that there are certain important points to note about conflicts. Conflicts arise due to conflicting interests. And we can very well imagine when there's a supplier or a vendor and there's a firm getting uh, things, procurement. Now the supplier would want to make maximum profit and the company would want quality goods or supplies at least cost. So there's a conflict. Similarly, there may be other reasons of conflict also, but the point made here is that conflict is not always bad, it is useful, it uh, brings our attention to objectives and uh, also it uh, brings our attention to the interpersonal dealings of people mm -hmm. and also it uh, helps us uh, uh, to brainstorm and solve problems. Sir, is conflict also one of the factors of change? Conflicts naturally, when resolved, bring new resolutions or solutions to problems which help us mm -hmm. and go forward and uh, help us to be innovative and to be creative. Conflicts may be dysfunctional also sometimes when they cannot be resolved properly mm -hmm. and uh, they are productive also 
when they are solved in a creative manner to the benefit of uh, everybody. So the conflicts are something which depends upon the smartness of the manager, how he or she handles them. Students, next is the nature of negotiation. Let us have a look what is basically the nature of negotiation. The favorite technique for resolving conflict is negotiation. Negotiation is the process through which two or more parties seek an acceptable rate of exchange for items they own or control. Firms should view conflicts within the organization as conflicts between allies, not opponents. And this is the most important point. All right. Conflicts are between the people and sometimes the parties concerned or parties at interest belong to different organizations. Mm -hmm. Now that is a different matter. Yes. But when they are within the same organization, then they must be treated as allies yes. and not antagonists. Mm -hmm. So the conflict is in a way a friendly contradiction which must be resolved in favor of the company. All right. And uh, also we have uh, uh, the through which more parties seek an acceptable rate of exchange for the goods or services that they own because the conflict is due to conflicting claims also. Therefore, we must consider the, both the parties and we should try to resolve it so that nobody feels hurt. Mm -hmm. Sir, I gather here that an organizational conflict occurs when two of the parties and their interests and values are incompatible with each other. Is that right? Uh, yes, we can say that they are incompatible. Actually, they have to create compatibility out of this so-called incompatibility because all companies are working for profit mm -hmm. and uh, they have to uh, take uh, one another's help also. Yes. One is a supplier or vendor, the other is uh, the purchaser. But uh, what is important is that they should uh, try to resolve these in such a way that uh, they, uh, what we call a win-win situation to which we will be coming just now. All right. The real way or the most accepted technique of resolving conflicts is negotiation. negotiation. Let us see what is good negotiation and what is its output. Facilitating the integration of activities Lateral relations allow decisions to be made horizontally across lines of authority. Because each area has its own goals, integrating activities of two or more units is certain to produce conflicts. These conflicts may be resolved by negotiating a solution if one exists that produces gains or minimizes losses for all parties. The point to note here is lateral relations, which means that we must try to create links laterally mm -hmm. or in a linear fashion because uh, vertically we face authority and we face power and uh, wherever there is power as we learned in the previous uh, program, yes. there is politics, politics and that is something which perhaps may not be helpful in uh, resolving conflicts. And it might not create a healthy environment in an organization. Exactly. So uh, we have to create uh, lateral links and uh, in a way we can say that internally we have to create uh, uh, what we call chartering mm -hmm. and uh, partnering outside the company and that is what we will learn presently. I would like the expert to explain us what is the visual indicating intensity of conflict graphically. This is the point made that we were uh, explaining just now that the conflicts are not always dysfunctional. They are useful because they give rise to a lot of new ideas and they give rise to activity also and uh, sometimes it is helpful in increasing 
the productivity by making people alert. Mm -hmm. As you can see, on x-axis we have level of conflict and on y-axis we have performance. Now, as a conflict gains in intensity, it raises productivity to the level of B, the center point where it is at the highest and the productivity is also at the highest All right. and then it starts uh, declining Dec the productivity, mm -hmm. it becomes dysfunctional All right. and uh, till ultimately it is at the lowest level of performance. It means that till a certain time the conflict is productive and if dragged beyond that or if it is not resolved at the appropriate time, it may become dysfunctional. So this relationship looks like a curvy linear correlation. Shall we say, sir, here that uh, prolonged conflicts are not very healthy for an organization? Yes, all organizations have conflicts. Therefore, we cannot say that conflicts are useless or unproductive all the time. But they should not be prolonged. They should be resolved at the appropriate time and resolved through negotiation. All right. And for that, we need to see what sort of conflict are these and uh, what can we call them. So All let right. us see what are the types of conflicts that uh, I was one about can to face. ask you, sir, that can we classify conflicts? Yes, we can. Here is uh, uh, the classification before you. Types of conflict. Interpersonal conflict between individuals based on differing goals or values. Intragroup conflict occurs within a group or team. Intergroup conflict occurs between two or more teams or groups. Managers play a key role in resolution of this conflict. Inter-organizational conflict occurs across organizations and managers in one firm may feel another is not behaving ethically. Now, these conflicts are of different nature. Obviously, if the conflict is between two groups, which we call intergroup conflict, it will be handled in a different way because the groups may belong to two different sections or departments or divisions mm -hmm. or units or subunits. All right. But if it is an intra-group conflict, which means the conflict is inside a group and uh, there is a danger that it may affect their overall performance. performance. So mm -hmm. it will be dealt with in a different way. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there may be a conflict inside an organization and there may be conflict between two organizations and the two organizations are mostly competitors or maybe the supplier and the, the procurer. Now, the managers have to play a key role in all these conflicts because in intra-group they have to make their group working and a performer and in intergroup they have to settle issues with other departments and in interpersonal they have to ameliorate yes. or alleviate the personal contradictions between people so that they are at peace and they can cooperate with one another. Similarly, in inter-organizational conflicts, mm -hmm. they have to deal with competitors and they have to deal with people who are outside the organization. organization. And naturally, they have their own organizational culture and environment. Definitely. And their attitudes may be different from our attitudes. So that is something that has to be tackled very smartly. Very smartly, yes. So there must be some sources of these conflict conflicts. What are these? Yes, of course. Obviously, all conflicts are not of the same nature and they are not of the same origin. All right. So, their sources vary mm -hmm. and uh, the manager...